course. Um, good. Sorry, I'm just oh. starting the recording. Thank you. <laughs> okay. All right, our collaboration exhibit, Compassion, which um, pre-apocalyptic days was supposed to be held in June. Um, it's going to be, it's definitely been confirmed. It will be a virtual exhibit. The Holocaust Museum is in the process of putting together um, the virtual exhibit. They don't have a confirmed date for us. Um, they're a little shorthanded in the individuals that, that do that sort of thing there. So they're rushing, you know, as fast as they can to, while still putting together a quality piece. And as soon as we have the date, Melody is sitting there with the book ready to go, ready to insert the date, and she's gonna ship it off to the printer. As soon as it gets back, we'll let everyone know. Well, I mean, we'll let everyone know the date too. So yeah. we're trying to figure out how to have a launch party online, and yeah, we're gonna do it. Yes. We just know when. It's gonna so poised and ready. Yes, Melody. But. <laughs> you means like drink, right? That means take a sip. Okay. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, I want to mention real quick that we are in the midst of uh, Echo Fund applications, and you have to have been an active member for the past two years. And what I did the beginning of July was I sent. Uh, uh, we have gone through, um, our membership has gone through all the roles very carefully, and we've identified the um, members who have not won an ECHO fund before, but they are uh, eligible. And I sent each one of them a letter, and um, this is a great year to do it. We're still going to do it. We're lagging behind. This would have been in April, but We've waited and now we need to get this done this year. So in September, we will do the drawings uh, at our Zoom meeting. And um, uh, the deadline is the beginning of September. Um, anyone who has questions about ECHO Fund eligibility or anything, yeah, let me know because this is a good year. We don't have a huge pool of people who are eligible. so. Chances are good, and I see at least three people here, maybe more, who uh, got an email from me, and I will resend it in uh, the beginning of August, because you'll still have one month. Um, the thing I want to mention about that, that one member brought up a concern that they had a great idea, but <laughs> it got ruined by the pandemic, so uh, if you 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 are you need to say what you're what you're thinking you're going to do with the money, but I'd like to have a little um, a leeway on that because uh, if things clear up and all like that, and you can do travel and go to another city and go to a workshop or do something, um, you can change your project a little bit if you wanted to kind of list two possible uses. Um, a stay home and a go somewhere that you would do, that's fine too. We just don't want anyone to not apply because of the condition that um, we find ourselves in, in the unknown. Um, hey Lee, for the guests, could, let me know. could you yep. kind of, for the guests, could you explain what this is? Yes, ECHO Fund is, uh, stands for Econo um, Educational and Cultural Opportunity Fund. It's uh, every year WIVLA gives two thousand dollar grants, one thousand to a writer and one thousand to a visual artist. So we're covering both the literal and the visual and over the last 20 years we've given forty two thousand dollars to members who've applied for Echo Fund. So we're very proud of our record of supporting our members in a significant way where they can take that money and I had a whole list, and I think I sent somebody here the list, I'll probably use that in August, uh, on whether you travel or you're buying, now's a good time to buy equipment for your studio, your home studio, make improvements to your home studio, buy um, supplies or any kind of equipment you need to do what you need to do here, you know, if it's ordering things from far away or whatever. So uh, we've had people, um, 
uh, travel, hire an editor, um, you could self-publish, you could do By all printers. kinds of things. Someone even yes. got a septic system in for the chemicals and stuff yes. that she was going to yes. be using. So it's oh, pretty so. wide open. And then yeah. within a year, the, um, these are September, they'll be due next September, you will do a presentation on what you did with your money. Um, the ones that won in 2019 will, we missed do them presenting in our <laughs> additional April month. So we're gonna have them present next April. So yeah, we want, we're gonna get back on track, but we can't let this year go by without giving away $2,000. So um, they present in September. Yes. No, the, the people yeah. that win, the no, the, winners, new, the, the people yeah. from last year could present this September, couldn't they? Um, it could be a Zoom meeting. Yeah, but we really, we have four. And so oh, we're okay. thinking, well, we'll we're going to, if we have them present in April, that will get them, get us back on track. Okay. All get right. Some extra time. Gotcha. And then the, um, the, this one next year will be odd lane because we'll have April and September okay. echo presentations. But yeah, it's just to give everyone a little more time too. A few people didn't get a chance to finish preparing their presentation for April before everything shut down. So we we're just giving them a break too. But that's a really good question and we've thought about how to do this. Anyway, it's a perk of being a consistent member of, of um, WIVLA and keeping up your membership. And we don't want someone to just join, take the money and run. So we kind of, you know, <laughs> have to have rules. So that's the Echo Fund. You'll hear more about it in the, uh, from me directly, since it's not every single member and person who's ever been a member. It's a select group. And if you're, you got it uh, from me, please apply. <laughs> <laughs> got money. Okay. Um, the un other announcement I have before I turn it over to two other announcements is um, this. <laughs> I agonized over canceling our social media workshop in March. That was March 14th. It was two days after they canceled the rodeo and we were just like, what are we going to do? So we had to cancel and it was, it was really rough, but it was the right decision to do. And so uh, we've decided to do it as um, um, a virtual workshop. And I've contacted, we were going to collaborate with Clay Houston, which is a very dynamic group about the same size as us. Um, and we're, I, they still want to collaborate. So now we're working on dates. So pieces will be coming together on this. Yes, test, but the great test. thing is, <laughs> we hear you, Lee. Hi. Can you Hi. hear us? Hi. Now you're there. Okay, yay. Um, the great thing about this social media virtual workshop is we're still going to, we're going to expand and have six different media platforms that we're going to cover. It'll be broken up so it's not like a one-day marathon where your head's going to explode. And it's going to be free. Every member of WIVLA. Free. Yeah. Wow. Okay. So be watching for that. Um, as we get dates figured out with Clay Houston and um, gather up our presenters again, we will be, um, you'll be hearing more about it. We're aiming for October. So um, it's going to be a great gift to our members. So uh, that's coming up. And then, uh, Marie, can you talk about, is Marie, where'd you go? Yeah. yeah. No, She's right, right next to you. <laughs> Patty Corner. Yeah. Okay. Um, can you talk about the virtual gallery uh, for WIVLA? Yes. Um, a lot of galleries have gone virtual uh, because they're, they're closed or open by appointment only. So all their opening shows have been canceled. So a lot of the shows have gone virtual. Um, Melody found, oh, I said Melody. <laughs> <laughs> we did the homework on uh, one platform called exhibit.com. And that's exhibit with two Bs. And so they have, uh, I think, four different size galleries to choose from. Um, so we thought this would be uh, something great to offer to our members. 
um, a virtual show. Um, I've created one myself. If I can give you the info if you want to look at, or you can go to Instagram at exhibit with two Bs and look at some of their, their samples. Um, so basically what we would do is offer our members to have a showing um, and each artist would get two walls and literary artists would get one wall and we'll go into detail about how it would look for for writers but basically is a chance to have a show to have your work in a virtual gallery um, in addition to Wivla promoting it exhibit promotes on uh, Facebook and they also promote on Instagram so you would be uh, pretty much I mean, there, a lot of people would have access to your to your images. Um, and at the moment, our trial would be to give people a chance to show for two months. And each, each show would last two months. And so every other month, we would set up a new exhibit with two visual artists and one literary artist. And uh, I mean, all the details will be coming up in, in our next newsletter with how many images you can submit and, and all the details. So based on the size of your work, you could have seven to nine images um, at any particular show. Maureen, can you, uh, share the uh, link for your, um, so any, we could, can, people could go and look at it as a great example. Let me see. So while she's looking for it, they also yeah. have some great tools for sharing images from the gallery on social media platforms. So Wivla will be promoting uh, the images from the, the different artists. Um, you can link images to your website uh, you, for, for, for performance and um, literary uh, artists. Um, you can have links to YouTube, you can have readings and performance and so forth. Not sure I'm sharing yet. Can you, you are. You yeah, are. There you are. Yeah. Okay. So this is, this is pretty much uh, how, it, how it looks. And you can, um, so I call my, my show mm -hmm. Interval Station, and it's based on Vasily Kandinsky's uh, theory of how the viewer and the art can uh, resonate and so here's my little gallery i have 17 images and i'll just quickly take you through it that's so uh, cool great oh. i like it love it oh. and so there's multiple ways of of uh, navigating around there you can kind of walk and and similar like to moving forward and back and up and down and just kind of perusing around uh, the gallery. That's fantastic. So this is a great way to to get your art out there. Um, I've had uh, I've had people find me because of exhibit because they they shared it on their on their Instagram on their Facebook. Um, I've sold a couple of pieces uh, and then I had to try to figure out or I learned how to edit <laughs> and show that a piece was sold. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, it'll put a red dot next to it. That's cool. So Ooh, this, I love that one. That one. <laughs> what is this? What is this? This is uh, a platform called exhibit.com. Okay. Two bees. Uh, and, if and you, if, two bees and you can find them on instagram now if you have a laptop or desktop you don't have to download the app you can just view it um and anyway that's that's my little exhibit you can use uh full screen or uh everything you do your you submit your details about the medium size all of that will be done for you uh, you just have to submit your images and we will curate it for you. And we, uh, there'll be some information in the newsletter, like she said, and this week, uh, working with 
Natalie, we should be able to have uh, the form, the request form uh, on the website. And any questions that you have, just, just let us know. I can answer questions. I've, I put my first one together and um, my plan is to do one every other month. So I can, every two months I, I, I'll set up a new one and I'll be, I'm currently working on the images for my next one. And the price is really reasonable too, that you, by selling one piece, you cover at least a couple of months, right? By, by selling that one piece, I already covered my, my six month commitment. Oh my gosh. And, and what we're gonna be offering the members is like if you've been a member for what three years or something like that it's like what five dollars a month i mean it's 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 almost free <laughs> um, it'll always be you know like i think less than ten dollars a month if i'm remembering correctly I, maybe well i don't know it, but it's it's a really good price we do the work there is a there is a little bit of work to it i think Marie said originally she was thinking of changing it out every month, but yeah. you know, I, I have one also and mine's every three months. It is a lot of work. It is work to, to yeah. keep it up. But we'll do the work for you. Right. <laughs> um, um, if we could maybe along with the um, newsletter article about it, Melody, maybe put a couple of examples, like if, if Marie and you are willing to put the links in there to yours i mean i think that would i give... did i think i did i sent it to haley already i think i did okay, didn't great. I, haley? okay. no marie send the link to yours too I yes sent mine her. is actually featured in the july newsletter because i sent oh. it to haley uh last month so yeah. yeah she she has it on on the oh yeah the newsletter if anybody okay. wants to, to take a look at it what <clears throat> happened to judy uh, <laughs> walked away from oh <laughs> he's in i had a, a side conversation going on and i don't know that i responded to the person adequately and then i got oh, okay. lost <laughs> point the like, camera at you not the it ceiling. looks like we got the ceiling oh view. you got my ceiling yeah here i am okay <laughs> okay uh we have one more announcement and then <clears throat> we're going to get to our uh, presentation tonight and that is on the literary scene, um, <clears throat> we do have a topic for the November literary readings. And these, traditionally, Wivla does these November literary readings at Archway. But we're gonna be doing this online. I don't think we're gonna have any other option, but um, uh, so we'll be working all of that out. And um, the theme is resilience. So any writers out there or people who write and do artwork or whatever, um, be thinking about that theme and we'll probably do what we normally, or what we've done in the past or what we did last year, which was set up a, a place for you to go sign up to read. And we'll help everyone through the process of how we're gonna do it and do it live and record it or whatever. By then we'll all be social media geniuses because we will have taken all the workshops. So um, uh, be thinking resilience. Last year it was silver because it was our silver anniversary. Um, but resilience is, um, uh, Denise, was that your suggestion? I think, yeah. So thank you for that. I think we're gonna get some great responses. All right. Um, if you have technical issues with getting your newsletter or you don't know where it went, maybe it went to your spam or you have some issue with that or with getting MailChimps from us, um, please contact Haley. Haley's in the upper corner. Um, mine, yeah. Um, Haley is our newsletter editor and she's also a technology goddess. So she can help you through. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, she can help you through issues that you have uh, that, that maybe things are being blocked and you're not getting all of your communications from us. Newsletter at wivla.org will get you to Haley, okay? And then if you have membership issues and you're thinking, am I a member? Did I pay? Whatever. Um, you can always check with uh, Judy. Judy's right there. 
I do so, yeah. <laughs> um, Judy Champ is a co-chair of membership. The other is Sabina Gart Gartler, but you can uh, write to membership at wibla.org and we can look it up for you or answer any questions you have about the membership levels. Um, so I just wanted to make sure I introduce you to two of the board members who handle these important communication issues. Um, all right, next, um, uh, Melody, are you ready? And June, uh, you ready? Melody's yes. gonna introduce our speaker. <laughs> One more big swig, Melody. Okay, okay. take it away. <laughs> so I've known June uh, for a few years now, I, maybe four, I guess I've been a member for about four years. Uh, and I'm always learning new things about her. Um, she's worn many hats during her career. She's been an adjunct professor, which I didn't know. Uh, she's been in technical sales. We'll have to talk about that. And a professional musician. And 25 years ago, she returned to art with photography. She's attended classes, gone on photo expeditions, and traveled around the world, including to some of the most striking and famous natural settings. Her work is based on the natural world at a macro and micro level. June's made presentations to art groups in Texas, Colorado, and aboard a ship, kind of up Karen's alley. She's had uh, five solo shows and has participated in numerous group shows. Her work is included in collections around the country, and she's currently serving her sixth stint on the WIVLA Board of Directors. June, I'm Hello. eager to see what you have. Okay, well, let's see. Um, Haley, can we make me bigger for a minute? Um, you just have to go up to the top corner there, June, right above yeah. you. And there should be a little tab that says speaker view or gallery view. Okay. Oh, oh, yeah. Yeah. So All if right. everybody right. wants to make June the speaker view, you can do it that way. Okay. I've got you in the speaker view now. <laughs> now we got you. <laughs> we got you, June. Yeah. <laughs> We can mute ourselves. Yeah, I can go ahead and mute everyone if that's okay. 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 <laughs> All right, let me come back over. Except here. June. Yeah, don't make me. <laughs> anyway, okay, so uh, I offered to do a program thinking that I was going to do something uh, like showing my travel photographies for my last three month cruise around the world. <laughs> and uh, Lee said, oh, I just love your photography, and you could, how do you do that? I mean, you've got such an eye. How do you do that? And I said, okay, well, I will try and give that to you. So let's see if I can get going here. And, oh, there we go. And having just a little trouble with getting rid of all the PowerPoint stuff, but I guess that's good enough. <laughs> okay, so how to see like a photographer and, and get a great picture. Um, in considering this, I'm trying to say why do I like the shot so much? And anyone who is an artist or uh, doing paintings, or drawings, knows that all of these elements are important. So the color, is there a line that your eyes follow? You want people to come into your picture and move around it and just stay there and, and really look. Uh, texture is interesting, contrasting elements, selective focus and shadow, and all of these are things that are good. Um, by the way, I think we'll have time for questions at the end. What I would suggest if you have a question is to go to the bottom of your screen and there's a place where you can hit chat and then you can just send it to me. The other thing you can do is if you think of something after the fact or I don't get to it, you can contact me at treasurer at wivla.org and I'm happy to answer whatever. So. Let's take a look at things here. Okay, here's an example of contrast. Um, I was walking around and I saw these 
these colors together and I had to take a picture. It's just so, so interesting. Uh, just uh, red popping against that blue. And uh, what I neglected to say a minute ago is um, why do I like the shot or something is uh, it's got to have the ooh-ah factor. <laughs> so these days, um, I don't photograph just to photograph. I'm selective about what I'm shooting. Um, most people, you don't need to worry about that now because it's digital and it doesn't cost anything to shoot as many images as you want. You just have to go through them later, which can be a pain. Um, so I'm looking for something that really makes me stop and look. Um, other things that are helpful when you want to get a nice picture is framing your image with something around you. Maybe it's a window you're shooting through, maybe it's a couple of trees, maybe you're going through some leaves. And this is an example. Um, I took the shot on the left first and liked it. It looked loved this road and the aspens and everything. And then I noticed the trees on the right that had a nice little space and that I could go through those and take a similar shot. And I like it very much because it really does kind of guide your eye to the back to the last of the aspens. <clears throat> Um, this is in Japan using tree branch, beautiful tree branch, cherry blossoms to enhance the image of the uh, pagoda-like structure. Line. I love taking shots like this that go way back that are structural and just keep you going and going and going. Okay, this is my most technical slide. Uh, we are going to put it in the newsletter so you don't need to worry about, um, whoops, let me try that again, uh, about taking notes. But um, some of the key things are before you go shooting, check the batteries. Number one thing, check the batteries. Used to be you have film in the camera, but now it's check the batteries that they're charged. Um, that you have all kinds of connection cords, chargers, um, lenses. I always take a hat with me when I'm shooting and I take something that has a soft brim on it because I can then have something that gives me a little shadow if I've got sun coming in at an odd angle. If you're shooting, I'm going to be saying iPhone all night, but any smartphone, you have the problem of not being able to see it in bright light. So you can get a black cloth, put it over your head, and then have that coming over the edge of your camera so you can see what you're shooting at. Um, whoop, sorry. Ah, get away from that. <laughs> um, best time to shoot is called the golden hour. An hour before dawn, before and after dawn, and an hour before and after sunset. The sun is at a low angle and you get literally beautiful golden flavor to your shot. The worst time is noon, when the sun is overhead and you will get very harsh shadows. It's especially bad if you're trying to take a picture of a person because they'll just be shadows all over them. And, uh, Look up, down, and all around when you're choosing your shot. Um, I spend a lot of time looking. Um, if I'm walking, I'm looking. I'm looking down. I'm looking at the trees up above. Um, I'm looking as there are some berries on a plant. Maybe I'll do a close-up of them. Um, but it that's probably one of the major things that maybe a photographer will do differently than someone who's not, because we have to see it to take this picture. Um, another thing that I've found is 
I was trying to take a uh, sunset picture in Sedona and I was waiting, I had my camera on my tripod and I'm waiting for the sun to change and the sky to change and take that beautiful picture and it wasn't happening. And in disgust, I kind of turned around and there was a gorgeous sky and that's the picture I wound up taking. Okay, so I was over at WASH looking at an exhibit and walking down the sidewalk was the cypress tree. And so, talk about texture. I took a couple of shots of this. And then, in the end, I did some cropping. And this is the ultimate image that I printed. So, cropping can do all kinds of interesting things. Um, let's see. A major thing that you're going to do when you're taking pictures are the settings and choices that you have on your particular camera. Now for the big cameras, the digital single lens reflex, um, you can have that on complete manual or you can have it partially manual, you can have it automatic on some, but you have a way of adjusting the amount of light that's coming into the camera and being turned into an image. Um, the f-stop refers to how uh, open the lens is. And the more open the lens, the less is going to be in focus and vice versa. Your aperture is going to be the same thing and I just screwed up here. Shutter speed is what should be on there. Um, shutter speed, if it goes fast, you're not going to get blurred images. If it's slower, you need to be very steady so you don't get a blur. Um, ISO is how sensitive the sensor in the camera is to the light that it's bringing in. On a lot of cameras, that will change itself automatically. On the big cameras, you can set it or you can set it to do an auto. On the smartphones, it will do it automatically. And it's changing the uh, aperture and the shutter speed as well. Um, on the smartphone, <clears throat> you, can, you can touch your image on the screen actually just hold this up and yeah it doesn't work very well anyway <laughs> you can have the thing you want to see if you touch right near it you will see the camera will focus in at that particular place as opposed to doing a general focus over the whole um, scene you will also find that there will be a little light uh, symbol and that you can drag that up and down to get a higher exposure than what the camera wants to give you at that moment. Um, cropping with a camera, you can do that and it's better to crop with a camera because then you have a lot of information. If you crop after the fact, then you have a finite amount of information and you're taking stuff off the main scene. So you wind up with fewer pixels. Um, and whether you're shooting auto versus manual, it's how much time do you have to set up all those um, settings? Um, do you need to control it? Are you taking a waterfall where you have to have a slow shutter in order to get the image you want? <clears throat> Okay, this is an example of selective focus, and I think that you can see the first picture, there is some blurring in here, but everything else is sharp. And this one, everything is pretty sharp. This one, less is in focus, sharpness is back here. And uh, the final one, the tree is completely blurred. I did a lot of shots of that. In the end, I didn't like any of them. 
iPhones take great pictures. Um, I took these with the iPhone at the uh, Museum of Fine Arts, and they had an exhibition of old cars that was really fun. Um, and I just wanted you to see how much detail you can get just with your smartphone. I have printed from the smartphone that Cypress picture I have printed. So don't think because it's an iPhone that you can't make a decent sized print. Okay. <clears throat> um, bracketing and the angle that you choose to shoot the subject. That's something that you can do very easily while you're there. I take a lot of shots of a single object, especially if I'm doing close-up work. Um, so the middle object is a little darker here. I've brought the exposure up a little bit. Other options that I had that I looked at when I was doing this. Okay, this is a fun. Um, I did take a Holland, a trip to Holland specifically to um, shoot the tulips. And I lucked out and I got there at just the right time. And driving down the road, instead of a cornfield, you see tulip fields. And they are just stunning. So this is the first shot of the field, you know, stop by the side of the road. By the way, my husband has been very well trained that he knows if I'm looking hard, that he, he's gonna hear stop anytime. And he may be backing up for a bit so that I can get the shot. <laughs> so that's the first um, attempt. Now I've taken the whole field, not just the red portion. And you can see there's all kinds of stuff in the back that I don't really care about having in the image. So, after I got this home, I did a fairly significant crop and got one of my favorite pictures called Vantage Point. <clears throat> um, a few comments about travel photography. Um, when you're by yourself, you can do pretty much what you want. You have time to take your shot. You can go early at dawn, you can stay till sunset. If you're traveling with a group, that really limits what you are able to do time-wise. So in my in a recent trip to Brazil, I did a lot of uh, shooting out the bus window. You can get some good images out the bus window. Um, but I finally gave up trying to do all the manual settings and shot in auto. Um, be careful when you get into the Middle East and some of the Asian countries, they don't all like having a picture taken. In, uh, uh, in the uh, United Arab Emirate, uh, you are not allowed to take a picture of a woman and you have to ask to take a picture of a man. So be careful lest somebody whistle you off to some prison. <laughs> some, some places won't let you take pictures of children, period. Portugal or Spain was like that. Yeah, yeah. Um, and uh, maybe dress conservatively. And uh, as soon as you get in the Arab countries, be prepared to uh, cover your head, take your skirt kind of long, cover your toes. It's quite amazing. <laughs> so ask and uh, check out what the customs and the rules are for a particular spot. Um, a couple of tips. If you can use a tripod, do it. Um, I have a, a mixed love affair with my tripod. I hate taking the time to set it up, but I love the pictures that come from it because I will be absolutely stable. I can take a picture that will take a long shutter time and I'm not worried about jiggling that in my hands or jiggling my hands because I'm restless or something else. 
Um, when you don't have a tripod, oh, I should also say that there are little tripods you can get for smartphones. And you can put them on a table. You can possibly tie them to a tree. There are quite a variety of things out there. Um, if you can't use a tripod, brace yourself. Put your arms against a fence. Put your body against a rock. Lean your elbows on a rock. Whatever might be around that helps you stay very stable. Um, one thing you can do is if you don't have the tripod and you're going to take a picture that is fairly dark and that means that it's the shutter is going to be open for a long time um, use the timer get everything set up set the timer and then let go of the camera and you won't risk the blurring and shaking um, i use as little flash as possible and frequently the museums will not allow you to use flash and if you have a smartphone, it is indeed possible to turn the flash off. Um, sometimes I turn the flash on if I really want to get some fill light into what I'm shooting. Take lots of shots, especially with people. Uh, if you try to take a group shot, okay, who's got their mouth open, who's got their hand and their nose, and you know what it looks like. So take a bunch of shots at once. So eventually everybody is going to be looking good. Um, <clears throat> both the little cameras and the big cameras have the capacity to take multiple shots very quickly. So that's there. Um, shoot a lot. Delete it later. Um, <laughs> I think I took 4,000 pictures on my three-month cruise. And uh, it took me two years to go through everything <laughs> and delete everything. And by that time, I was rather tired and probably took the next year and didn't shoot more than 100 pictures. Um, but you've got it. You don't necessarily have to edit a photograph. It can be fine just as it comes out of the camera into the printer. But if you do need to do something. You have the capacity of Photoshop. You have a uh, miniature Photoshop in iPhoto. There's tons of apps that will help you create interesting effects with your picture or correct issues. <clears throat> okay. Um, at night, on a uh, night with a big moon, you can get some nice bright pictures of people you know really bright the moon this is us sitting around a fire pit and really nice um, light coming on everybody you can also get that with candlelight if you have enough candles that's my husband by the way <laughs> okay oops all right I'm out of order. That's okay. Um, this is an example of taking a picture with a good camera um, without flash, and you can still take some really remarkable pictures. Um, this stuff was really, really interesting in the armor and the horse's armor. Um, what am I looking for? Okay. First, I'm walking around this plantation and I'm seeing all these wonderful big trees. And I'm loving the Spanish moss. But then the thing that's really calling to me is the gorgeous light that's coming in on the tree trunks and giving me that wonderful tan color that just lights up the whole thing and makes the totality of it interesting. Um, personally, I don't like to shoot people, so I'm always trying to find ways to get around people. And of course, if you're going to popular places, there's always people right where you want to be. Um, but sometimes you really need a person 
because you would not know how huge that tree was if he wasn't in that shot. Um, up, down, all around, and I'm on my belly for this one. This was taken with an iPhone, uh, no flash. Great image. Okay, lots of pictures out the bus window. I, over here you see graffiti and it's almost always tagging and stuff, but this was in a, a cruise around South America. And the more graffiti I saw, it was all artwork. It was really cool looking stuff. So I started doing a lot of shooting of graffiti. Okay. When it comes to a sunrise or a sunset, you know, we talked about an hour before and an hour after. So when I've gone on photo expeditions, they get you up at before dawn and you drive to the spot where you're going to photograph and you need your tripod for this and you get everything ready and as soon as the light starts coming up, you take a picture and you continue taking pictures for as long as you think it's interesting. And the light will continue to change. Like I said, most of my pictures are sunsets. So this is the start of the sunset. And the bottom right is what it looked like at the end. Um, a simple picture. I was looking to do the sunset. I was at the equator and the sun literally dropped in a minute. I got up on deck prepared to take the sunset and it was going, going, gone. But I had wonderful light to do this one. This is Antelope Canyon, which is just a gorgeous place to be. And I just wanted you to see it. That's uh, outside Arizona on Navajo land. Okay, I went to a photo expedition in Rocky Mountain National Park. And we were going to shoot lake with a bunch of trees on the opposite shore. And we had hoped they'd be in autumn colors. They were just barely there. But we started walking up this very, very slight incline. And uh, being from Texas at sea level and trying to walk, at 9,000 feet, I was having a lot of trouble. So I'm walking a few yards, stopping to pant, walk another few yards, stop and pant. And by the time I finally got to the lake, everybody else except for one guy had set up on the prime positions to get the shot of the lake and the big wide picture. So uh, I set up and tried to shoot interesting looking things that I saw on the lake and came up with this shot. It's called A Moment at Dawn. And I, I guess it's the line. It's certainly the color. I'm always drawn by color that makes this picture special to me. This was the same day, same. almost the same same place a little later during the sunset when the sun has come up. Oh, please leave a message back to the hotel. <laughs> and these are three rocks that are in the lake. You're seeing the reflection of the rock on the bottom and the reflection of the trees in the water. It's called When Rocks Dream. Looking around all the time, walking in the woods looked down at stream and there were these gorgeous rocks with lichen on them making these wonderful colors. Cropping and going close on things. This rose became the start of a series I did called Natural Beauties Beyond the Petals in which I did very, very tight shots of flowers um, 
abstracting them in many cases. This is another image from that series. And I put together a little blurb book of the, that. And don't be afraid to shoot in bad weather because a gray sky gives wonderful contrast to color. And this particular, I was lucky, the sun is shining on that rock. I've been looking at that rock for years, wanting to get a good picture of it. And this day, the sky and everything was just bright. Okay. And I think, oh, this is a castle in Japan. Had to get a few foreign pictures in there. Um, another example of needing people to see how big something is. That was a huge Buddha. And this is Singapore. A lot of the Asian cities have the most interesting buildings. They just are so different from what we've got going. And the um, bottom of the left-hand picture, I think that's the Science Museum, what looks like a boat on the top of those three buildings is actually a casino and I think there is a pool up there. So just interesting things. And this is inside a mosque and again line, light, contrast of light to the dark. Oops, and I wasn't going to show you that. Well, okay, I'll show you this. Um, I started getting interesting in, in something totally different. And so I've been trying to put together a series called uh, Invisible Frequencies. And this is an example of two shots that I'm doing. I'm having fun with it. It's so different. But anytime there's a chandelier or uh, lit up glasses and stuff like that, I'm taking pictures and having fun. So with that, I will stop sharing. Questions? Thanks, Jim. Okay. I think we yeah. have some in your chat window. Um, there's oh, yes, let me look. Oh, yes, I do. That was, that was great. Thank you so much. Oh, thank you. Okay, Corey. The Laird Rock, Corey, was on the way from Santa Fe to Pagosa. So just uh, actually above the uh, oh, Lane, the Georgia O'Keeffe Place uh, Ghost Ranch right around there. Okay, okay printing. Um, I, I can tell you anyway. There is somebody that was recommended to me and it's Paul's Framing. He's downtown. Um, I'll talk to you about him sometime, but he's done a lot of framing for me lately. And his prices are a lot better than the people I used to go to who are doing framing for the museum and things. <laughs> this, he does printing? Fine art printing? Oh, oh I'm sorry, printing. Duh. <laughs> uh, <laughs> let's see, fine art printing. I have to remember the name of the place, but I'll get it to you. Okay, who is just curious, Jean? <laughs> Yes, a single-legged tripod is a monopod. And a lot of people use them successfully. I've never had a lot of success myself. Okay, there's the answer to that. <laughs> uh, the bark is not a sycamore. It, um, it really is a uh, cypress, I think, because the rest of the tree did not look like a sycamore. And bracketing. <laughs> okay, bracketing, when you have the serious camera and you're shooting in manual, let's say you're, you've set it and your light meter shows that you're right at the white pl right place to get the proper exposure and the good picture you're hoping for. Bracketing is, after I take that initial picture, I will add some light to the camera, allow more light to come into the camera and take that picture. And then I'll go the other way and allow less light to come into the picture. Now, originally this was done for slide pictures. And with um, digital, you really shouldn't need to do it. 
but I still find I like to do it <laughs> just mm -hmm. up there. Hey, June. Yeah. Um, I do that bracketing um, with my smartphone uh, when I'm shooting pictures because, you know, it'll, it, it's on auto, but that little bar on the side okay. where you can go lighter or darker, I'll do one above and one below or Great maybe point. a couple of them. And why not have a few to choose from? So on a, on a smartphone, you can also add more light or take more light away. And then you That's have right. some more to choose from. Thanks, Lee. Sure. Uh, tripod. Okay, it's the same thing. Oops, sorry. That's bracketing. Um, I have a new iPhone. It mm -hmm. is an iPhone SE and I'm liking it. My old phone was a 5S, so I'm coming way up because they're up to iPhone 11. But I like the smaller iPhone, and this one is almost the same size as my old one. When you get up in the 10 and the 11, they're substantially bigger. Uh. <laughs> okay, I think that's all the questions. And like I said, if I didn't get it, oh, okay, Vasha, nice to see you. Um, depending on what you're coming out from, if you're, you can use Photoshop on pictures from your big camera, certainly. There are other platforms out there that you can Google and find. I really only use Photoshop. Um, Adobe also has come out with something that's almost the same as Photoshop called Lightroom. So that's another potential thing. Um, let's see, what am I doing? Um, editing, printing tools. Okay, printing is challenging. Well, let me go back to editing because in, it, I have Apple stuff. So when I bring pictures in with Apple, it puts them into Photos. And Photos has its own editing platform that has quite a bit of stuff that you can do. You can tell it to do a manual edit, but you can also direct that you want more saturation or less or something like that. And uh, let's see. Oh, the other thing I was going to say, and this is the challenge, um, in order to get what you want from the camera shot to your computer screen to the printer, you need to calibrate things. So you may or may not have calibration capabilities in your equipment that you have. Um, Color Monkey is the name of a uh, product that has the tools to help you calibrate. And there's probably somebody else by now that's got something going. But that's the ultimate thing. <laughs> what does and calibrating do? It means that you're seeing the same color, that the colors aren't shifting when you get the print out of the printer. Yeah, that's always distressing. Uh, <laughs> yes. Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, yes, Karen, uh, you could use a polarizer to eliminate glare on bus windows. I think that would work. Um, let's see. <laughs> I asked you something, um, Jane. Sorry. It's back oh, a couple. I see it, yeah. Yeah, inexpensive phone tripods are great. No, the next, further down, that one is, um, I have a um, semi-automatic, it's a Lumix. Uh -huh. I do not, I can't figure out even using the manual how to use most of the stuff on it. I get, a, it, it. things pop up and I'm like, where did that come from? Like <laughs> bars around it and I'm like, well, I didn't do that where, you know. Uh, maybe some, you I have to some, read the manual and play. <laughs> It's so know, annoying. That's, that's what my friend said, but I almost need somebody to like just. Sometimes I, I just I can't figure it out. I have played a little bit, but hey, yeah. Rona, 
Yeah. There, you could probably go to the website for the manufacturer and everybody has a bunch of like how to videos Absolutely. now. Yeah. So you could probably find some tutorials on the website for the main, the brand of the camera, or maybe yeah. even you just Google it and everything's on YouTube. So there might be, well, uh, you can yeah. watch then somebody's tips rather than trying to read it in the manual. It's hard in the manual. Good idea. This is my second Lumix, the first one. Um, Panasonic, the first one, the screen was getting a line on it, though it still works. Okay, Rona, is that just a no, rectangular? I mean, it's it's how thick is it? Not very thick. Okay. No, it, it's a little thicker than um, my old one. Yeah, the 35 millimeters, yeah. This one is, a, um, no, my old one was a regular, was a this too. It's just, a, this is a newer version. Mm -hmm. and it has more on it. Mm -hmm. I can do, you know, I can do videos, I can do whatever um yeah and oh and the other thing it does have is has a viewfinder yes you're uh -huh. lucky now i've stopped getting the uh, cameras because the last camera i had had a viewfinder on it and after that i couldn't find one so this you, one has a view you're lucky you're I can't lucky get to that. <laughs> you don't always it also has one of those little screens that flips up to try to i have a suggestion about traveling uh, what I do when I'm traveling is on your phone, you can set the location wherever you are. So if you're taking a picture in Katy, Texas, or Timbuktu, Idaho, uh, it will tell you down to the street and everything. And so when I'm taking pictures, even with my camera, my good camera, uh, mm -hmm. I take a picture uh, with my iPhone just to nail the location so i can look back and see where that location was when i'm seeing the pictures that i'm processing from my camera great idea um on my iphone it automatically puts that information yeah. there yeah right it's a it's a choice it's a choice setting but most of them people don't know that they have that on yeah. there yeah okay any more questions I thought Corey had one about the location of the cliffs with the dark sky. Yeah, I, I answered that. Oh. Was that Where was it? Adam Echo, Can uh, yes. Echo Canyon? Yes, Echo Canyon. Uh, years ago, when I took my first painting class, the one that I did with the Wivla Grant. Okay. <laughs> there you go. I recognized it. <laughs> it's, a, it's a cool spot. Uh, Jean, what, what kind of printers do you have at home? Okay, I used to have an Epson printer that could print something 13 by 19. Oh, wow. And uh, had all the bells and whistles and adjustments you could want. The problem was um, we have a second home in Colorado and we usually spend four or five months there a year. And so the printer is not being used during all that time and the ink dries up and then it dried up enough that it won't even come out the nozzles to clean them or anything. And so uh, I wound up just getting rid of them. I'm sure there's other Epsons that are really good out there. They were known for good color. They have lots of options for uh, what you can print on. Um, and uh, also guaranteeing a, uh, the longevity, like 100 year longevity on their materials. I've always had Epsons and I've been really happy and I've kept them for a long time. And I have that wide format too. So I'm about to write a note saying, ah, clean those nozzles. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've got a, a pretty cheap uh, HP right now. So. Uh. So I'm going to a printer, Melody, if I want something that I know will be really good. And I will think of their names. <laughs> but yeah, you, you know, I used, to, I used to use um, uh, AZ, which became Acker Imaging, which I think it's still Acker Imaging, but he doesn't, he used to process my 120 film because I'm really lousy at processing 120 film. Uh -huh. So now I have to bribe somebody. I think um, it's the same place. Is it? Um, okay. Just off of Shepherd. On Lillian. On Lillian. Uh, yeah. Lillian off of Shepherd. It's just yeah. south. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay. Oh. 
Yeah, I used to use um, H and P, but then they stopped doing anything but uh, yeah, HPL. Certain. Yeah. Okay. Lab. But then they stopped doing anything except for big jobs. And I also used to use a printer in Arizona because I had gone to expeditions and the leader was from Arizona and he had a printer in Phoenix and I used them a lot, but they have now gone to minimum dollar amount for printing. So it can get challenging. Yeah. Thank you all. Thank, Thank you. you so much. We appreciate it. Right, let's give it a round of applause. Yay. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> all right. Um, we have a, a June. Um, we really appreciate this. This has been fantastic. Um, let's get some more of your beautiful images on our Facebook pages. Anything you want to share, please um go ahead and put it on the member page mm -hmm. and uh really appreciate you taking the time to do this for us tonight so <laughs> you're so very welcome itching to get out there now and take some pictures <laughs> <laughs> um have to run we do out. have a, a few minutes for member news just a few minutes and we had decided in our board meeting because we're these meetings are getting bigger um would just call on a few people and it'd be a minute and a half. So um, <laughs> please, yeah, keep it short. And then anyone who wants to, I don't know, is that okay, Haley, if people hang around a little bit and if they oh, want Oh yeah, to. it'll keep running until we're done, so. Um, um, we do have, before we get into um, a couple of announcements or a couple of uh, shares and then just go to chatting and taper off from there. Um, Gretchen, are you still, are you still with us? Is Gretchen still on? Yes, yeah, she's I, over yes, here. I just unmuted. Uh, there you are. Okay. okay. Um, uh, Gretchen's going to announce our speaker for next month. Now, next month will be August. Oh my gosh. So she's already got somebody booked. Okay. This person, her name is Megan Shepard. Um, uh, her mom is my best friend. We've known each other since our early 20s, so over 40 years. We were pregnant together. So I've known, I've known Megan, her daughter, since before she was born. She's 35 years old. She is a belly dancer. Um, she, has, she went to school for art. Um, she loves to draw anime. She... Uh, but belly dancing is, uh, she's been in karate since she was a little girl, so she's always been interested in movement. And since she's, uh, she lives in, in mid-Minnesota, so who figures, there's a strong belly dancing group there. <laughs> and she has, she has studied with, um, I don't know if anyone knows anything about belly dance, she studied with Rachel Bryce. Um, who's like, you know, woo, big in the, in the world. She was there on the annual Tribal Revolution Belly Dance Festival in Chicago last year. She was an invited performer there. So she really knows her stuff. And a few months ago, she opened up a studio. So, you know, her dream is, and she has, she has formed her own fusion type belly dance. She's taken some of the, um, tribal belly dance, some of the classical belly dance, some martial arts moves and kind of formed her own moves. And her interest is really getting anyone comfortable with their bodies. And that, that really is her goal, to get people moving, to get them comfortable with their own selves. You can find her on Facebook, I'll put it on chat, but you can find her on Facebook or her website, Movement Garden Studio or Belly Dance by Meg, M-E-G-G. -G. Um, so I invite you to check her out and I've been wanting to get her as a guest pre presenter for a long time, but you know, Minnesota to here. Um, now she can do it by Zoom. So. <laughs> So, and she's used to, 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 to demonstrating for people. She has a Patreon, a Patreon account and yeah. 
So I'm excited about it. She's excited about it. And I think y'all will like her. Terrific, Gretchen. Um, we're so glad you found somebody who has a performance art form they're going to share. And maybe when you um, get with Haley on uh, writing the newsletter um, announcement about it, put, put those couple of links in there too. I will. So can, okay, great. No, August. Um, September, working on September, October, and I'm, I mean, we're, our, our year is already just about booked, and, um, but we welcome any suggestions because um, we'll have meetings next year. So anybody who has a suggestion for a program, please, you can send it to um, info at wivla.org and we'll pass it along. So, um, all right. Um, Anybody have a brief? I saw that uh, Rona had two pieces accepted to the VAA Invitational Jury online exhibit. Anybody else in the VAA show? Melody, of course. I have, I have, that's, <laughs> that's a drink. Uh, I have two pieces. I have two pieces also. Fantastic. Cool. Okay. And All right. So we do have some good crossover with them. Jenny said she had peace, right? Did you say that, Denise, that you had a piece in? No, I, I was going to share something, so sorry, I was okay. different. All right, uh, go right ahead, Denise. So, um, some of you know about my fiction novel, my dark, dark urban fantasy novel that I wrote. Um, it's a Amazon bestseller, but I finally got my medallion Ooh, for the award I won with my book. Let me take it out. Oh, how cool. So it was a bronze finalist in the Wishing Shelf Award. And um, it, I really was proud of this because it was an award where the reviewers were a reading couple of reading groups. So it wasn't fancy editors. They were, um, and they ranged in age from teenagers to 60 year old. <laughs> so it was a broad range. And um, it actually is a group reading groups in Britain and um, I think Scandinavia somewhere but anyway it I found out about being a finalist in March and then the bronze medal was announced in April but because of COVID the factory for making the medal shut down <laughs> so I just got this um, in the mail from the UK recently so I'm I'm pretty excited about it it was fun to finally get my medal and it's really heavy too oh. <laughs> so, you should be very proud. That's excellent. That's awesome. <laughs> Terrific. Very excited yeah. for my book. <laughs> Yay. All right. Another, another one? Who? Speak up. Rona, we'll I put the, the other half of my announcement is that next Wednesday and the two Wednesdays after at three o'clock in the afternoon, if you'd want to do it live, where you can ask questions if I have time to answer them, I'll be doing three. Um, art family based so the first one is watercolor textures so if you want to know how textures are created in watercolor um based on three of the exhibits at the blaffer the last one is made it's going to use play-doh <laughs> the third one we're going to make play-doh colored play-doh and use it so it'll explore color and color mixing and the middle one is printmaking using a styrofoam plate huh. and markers right. and and okay. and um and how do we find these markers? Well, it, I'm going to be doing it as, as as on Zoom, but they're recording it, and it'll be the, on their Facebook page on the Facebook. I'm Blaffer sorry, I missed the, uh, this page. On the on the Blaffer Art Museums. Blaffer, thank you. All right, so, um, Rona, you can share that on the the Facebook member I will. page. I will. Be sure and do that. Okay, so we we've can been go. Doing okay. it since, we've been planning it since June. It was supposed to be the beginning of July. For, finally got the technology figured out, and that's what that tripod's going to be for, <laughs> my phone, so that I can record in my studio. I had to get a booster for the um, for the internet, too. Otherwise, I couldn't get it out there. Mm. No. Not, not at the so Sawyer. That, that's, I, can't, I don't have any. In my garage room studio. So you'll see my garage room studio. It's kind of a mess. Very cool. <laughs> well, that's terrific. Okay, who else has news? Let's do a couple more. Somebody else? Gretchen. <laughs> what? Gretchen, oh, got a commission. Oh. Share it. <laughs> yes. Oh, yeah. At Winter Street, where me and Maurice share a studio, 
Um, we have just recent, all of the artists have recently been invited to share their, put their own art outside in the hallways, which usually doesn't happen because there's exhibits going on. Well, so we each put two pieces out there and I got an email today. This gentleman saw one of my pieces, one of my pieces that um, of an old photograph of a woman and I had made up some stuff about being strong and resisting and when you're knocked down, you get back up. And he was really attracted to that and he wants to give it to his daughter um, for her birthday uh, to just to, to, to kind of like encourage her to be a strong, independent woman. Cool. So we talked about it for a bit and we decided I'm going to do another piece in the next couple of days with again an old photograph in the same style but with the younger woman so I've already have the you know everything to do it with so yeah I'm excited I'm excited that I get to share a message that I feel so strongly about with a young woman and this her father is encouraging her to be that way so yeah That's it's great. just it's, it's really cool Yes. So you're still, you get, you're getting people walk through the, the studio building. They're open. Yes. Yeah, they're all yes. open. Um, yeah, the buildings are open. Uh, this last, was it this last Saturday? The second Saturday, the officially we had open studios. However, most of the artists, including Marie and I, were uncomfortable opening our studios. But we have a sign on our door for people walking through saying if you would like to schedule a private audience you know just yeah we do too yeah we can we can certainly set up private visits you know with mask and sanitizer which we have plenty of both and to either for them to look at our art or discuss commissions very cool so yeah so i was excited that's great other news Um, uh, Colorado I chapter. Lee Owen, I think Lee Owen might be hey, trying there. to talk. I just wanted to thank Haley. Can you hear me? Yes. Uh huh. I thank her for the member highlight that she wrote about me. I really enjoyed working with her. <laughs> it was it thank was you, a, a fun experience, and she did a beautiful a job. Me. I appreciate all your input and letting me write the article about you. It was a lot of fun. I enjoyed working with you too. Yes. Thank you. You're welcome. Very cool. Good, good. So there's a, a jury show in Colorado that Gretchen and I think I had mentioned it to her. You have to be a WCA member. It's the Colorado chapter sponsoring it. And the theme has to do with um, women and changing roles. I can't remember the exact title. Mm -hmm. um, it is, you can look it up on um, Cafe. Mm -hmm. Cafe or, the, or go to the Colorado WCA chapter. Right. It's on there. Because I thought of you because of the kind of things you've been working on. Right. But you have Thank to join. You. I am now a member of their chapter, and they the chapter's great. Okay. I'm going to send Very stuff good. to this wall show. So. Um, hey, Sharon Bippus, can you share about your skull project? We, I've been watching it on Instagram. Can you turn on your, there you are. Um, yeah, I don't know that it's much to share. It was the 100 day project that goes on every year. Um, I can't remember the name of the woman who started it, but it's on Instagram and you just commit to doing something every day for 100 days. Mm. And it could be anything, right? If you're a visual artist, um, if you're a poet, whatever, but you just have to do something every day. And it's finally over. <laughs> um, 100 days is a long time. <laughs> So tell, tell everyone what you did, because uh, we can go look at your Instagram and see them, right? They're oh, it's not, I mean, it's really not exciting. Um, <laughs> it, was, it was just, it was something very simple, because you have to do, I mean, in my opinion, because I work, I'm teaching summer school, and I don't have a lot of time right now, um, mm -hmm. but I just picked um, making a little skull, mm -hmm. because I like skulls. I was a a pirate for Halloween several years ago and started collecting skulls and I liked it. So I was just making little skulls every day. Um, kind of mixed media stuff using different things, but it was fun. If you want to see her work, 
go to S BIP. Sharon, this is Sharon Bippus. It's S B I P P on Instagram. And they are, I mean, just the amount of different materials and the colors and everything you did. It, it was fun to watch. I'm glad I didn't commit. <laughs> but it was a uh, wonderful to watch. So go and appreciate, you know, your, your stick to it It was great. Yay. <laughs> Anyone else? Corey, are you holding it up? Yeah. <laughs> oh, <laughs> so Thank you very much, ladies. <laughs> <laughs> All right, anyone else? Corey, back to school or not? She's muted. You're on mute. You're muted. Sorry. Teachers, go back July 30th. <laughs> Kids okay. come August 6th, but it's all virtual. Okay. Yes. Uh, July. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and I've spent the whole summer in this heat. <laughs> And I've come out smiling, so it's all good. <laughs> good. Okay, good. Good for you. I mean, I'm glad they're not making you go there physically. So, yeah. yeah. I yes. guess I can share. I've been doing a from home virtual yes. printing class. Oh yeah. And so behind me is my little setup, and so I have some of my like prints that are the first prints I've really made in a while because I don't have access oh. to a print. To a press and so there's some tell us how you're doing it uh, closer I'm sorry tell us how you do it oh yeah so the teacher like it's from the southwest school of art in san antonio and we're using these plates to do monotypes can you see what those are called i don't know if you're familiar with those so we're using those and so we are also using Charbonnel Aqua Wash printmaking inks. Um, so that's what I did with these. And so you're just applying it just like a regular monotype would, would be. And then you have to take a wooden spoon and rub it all around there. I tried like the metal spoon, the barons, and the wooden spoon that was from the dollar store worked the best. So go figure. Yeah. But yeah, that's some of the stuff that I've been up to. So those are some of them. Yeah, oh, Oh, so, I love that. Yeah, so we're learning how to do, I've got to catch up a little. I've got a holograph, so we're going to be doing that this week. So you just showed us yesterday. So, Can you I'll, show I'll the, the first thing? Show the first thing. Sure. The, the plate? The print or the plate? The plate. Okay. They're, I got them from mm -hmm. Dick Blick. Okay. And the company, it's called Graphex. So, so you, you put the put ink in, on that? Yeah. So when you take it out, like you can cut them and make them whatever size you want. So these are 8 by 12 sheets. And then you just pull the little blue plastic film off and it's clear. And then you just can reuse them over and over as long as you're not oh, it's, like. It's a is it basically like a sheet of plexiglass? Because that's what I've used before. It's really thin. But the thin one, yeah. It's a yeah, very it's thin super, one. super thin. And because you couldn't cut the plexi. But if anybody has old plexi for framing, yeah. That's the you right can also the one of the processes we're gonna learn is how to do basically like intaglio and dry point on these two. So uh -huh. that's kind of cool that it can it's that versatile. I, uh -huh. I've cut with a tool into plexi with the um where you yeah uh but that would i it it yeah with a uh, i forgot what the tool is but yeah i've got one like i have my old like dry point needle from when i did printmaking that's what it is yeah it's a dry point needle. Yeah. Just, you can use it into plexi too and yeah print. Haley, can you show the the ink that you're using hold up one of that i, I don't think that's the name that, that's a it's actually of. really, really good, and it really does remind me a lot of using actual printmaking ink, mm -hmm. but it's non-toxic and it's water-based. Can you guys see that at all? I think mm -hmm. I'm a little glare. Mm -hmm. But it's a French-based um, printmaking ink. That's a, probably a much better ink than like the ones I, I used, which were the um, uh, the common ones, but the water-based. Oh, what's you know it's. Speedball or whatever. Speedball, yeah. Yeah. 
<laughs> yeah, I've used those oh, too. Goodness. So I've learned a lot already and it's only been, this is week three, I think that we're on. So it's quite fun. So I'm class. enjoying it. I'm sorry. That's a really neat class. That was at the Southwest. Yeah, Southwest School of Art Southwest. in San Antonio. Yeah. So they had a bunch of classes. Class. So that's the one I chose. So anyway, that's what I've been up to. Yay! <laughs> what else? Anyone else? We're about to wind things up. And if you haven't had dinner yet, you know, you need to put something in your stomach if you're going to hear the name Melody anymore. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, uh, there, <laughs> there. Marie. Okay. So everybody has things to do. Go check out Marie's um, um, exhibit dot com, and um, yeah, and, and everybody check out Movement you, Garden Studio. Yes, and um, yeah, Movement Garden Studio, and uh, please, everybody who is a member is able to post on the Rivla Facebook members group page, okay? So, uh, and I just changed the banner on our public page because we were having a lot of confusion over which is which and all. So now you'll see a new banner on the public page and on the group page, you'll see the, the metal um, uh, logo that's the brush pen still. But the, when they both had it, it was a little confusing. But please share anything you want us to put on the public page, send to info at wivla.org. All of the board members are available to help you with anything you need. So, um, you know, call on us if there's something you want to see or something you would like to share. Um, let us know. Uh, Haley has a deadline of, uh-oh, was it yesterday <laughs> for the <laughs> newsletter? <laughs> Oh, yeah. I, I haven't been really hard and fast with it since uh, COVID, so if you have something, you can still send it to me. Okay, I want to send okay. something. Yeah, yeah please okay. do. All right. Fire Corey, has, fire has, a fire question. Corey has a question. I leave. How, how's everybody doing with zines? Uh, I've got to get started. Yeah, yeah you guys started. keep going on that. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Sketching out <laughs> ideas. Yeah, okay. Um, Download go, go a template. Take a look at, go take a look at Anne's and, uh, you know, combination of artwork and typed information, you know, so yeah, you can do it all by hand or, or whatever. So, um, yeah. Okay. It doesn't take long. Once you make one, you'll want to make another. All right, Corey. <laughs> okay, that's it. Okay. Okay, bye. 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 Bye, everybody. Thank bye -bye. you. Good night. Thanks, everyone. Hi, Josina. Hey, Josina. Good Good seeing everybody. Bye. Okay. Bye. Thank you. You're welcome. Bye. Thank you too, Lee. Bye. Thank you. Thank you, Haley. I appreciate all your work. Oh yeah, sure, no problem. It's okay. been fun. I'm going to dinner. I'm gonna. I'm gonna heat something up. <laughs> all right. I'm gonna end Good it. Night. Bye. Bye.